Dear viewers, listeners, and readers. Assalamu alaikum. The employees of public and private sectors often fall in confusion how to know about the laws, rules, and regulations governing their respective service. In such condition they remain unaware of their duties and rights. Consequently, they fall prey to confusion and feel handicapped to ensure service delivery as required. Sometimes they lose their jobs. Departments slash organizations also suffer. In order to sensitize the employees this lecture series has been prepared. It is also aimed at creating awareness about various laws, rules, and regulations and aspects of public administration. The content of the lecture shall not be quoted in any kind of legal matter or reproduce in making legal claim etc. I hope that the series will help the employees to know various laws slash rules, understand different dynamics slash aspects of their respective employment and get them prepared for discharging their duties and responsibilities with peace of mind and up to the optimum level with efficiency and dedication in the public interest. The Lecture Series Today lecture number 7 of the series is presented to honorable viewers, listeners, and readers. Topic of the lecture is Frequently Asked Questions Service Matters. Employees have to face various issues during their service. They remain in search of guidance to get solution of such problems. Their questions are of different types. Here are frequently asked questions. Attempt has been made to answer these questions. Question number one. How disciplinary proceedings or action may be taken against an employee? There are laws, rules, and regulations for taking action or initiating disciplinary proceedings against an employee. These laws slash rules regulate the conduct of an employee. Authority may not take action on one's personal whim and wish. In case such action is taken it may be considered as violation of powers or authority. Question number two. What employee should do on appointment? Employee must know the terms and conditions of employment. These are mentioned in offer letter of appointment slash appointment letter. The letter oftenly contains name of law slash rules which shall govern one's service. Employee must read these laws slash rules carefully to serve smoothly and peacefully. It may save an employee from any exploitation and ensure providing one's due right and privilege. Question number three. How to know the duties of a post on which an employee is appointed slash posted? For duties it is necessary to read job description, JD, of a post. Each department slash organization prepares JD of every post to avoid confusion in discharging duties and remove hindrances in smooth official business. After going through JD, an employee may perform one's duty with clarity and without any confusion. If an employee is posted to a post having some powers to be exercised then such employee must read and understand the powers. Employee must take care while exercising the powers and authority. Sometime confusion takes place in exercising powers which may lead to occurrence of untoward incident. It creates problems for a post and an employee. Thus. It is imperative to understand powers and apply due mind and diligence while exercising powers and authority. Question number four. What are modes of appointment in public sector? There are three modes of appointment. These include initial appointment, appointment by promotion and appointment by transfer. Initial appointment may be made on ad hoc or regular basis. Appointment by promotion is made when an employee is promoted to next higher post through laid down procedure. Employee is appointed from one post to another post. Through prescribed method which is termed appointment by transfer. Question number 5. What is ad hoc appointment? When the appointing authority considers it to be in the public interest to fill a post falling within the purview of the designated forum urgently it may pending nomination of a candidate by the forum, proceed to fill such post on ad hoc basis for a period not exceeding six months by advertising the same, in accordance with the procedure laid down for initial appointment. Question number six. What is the process of recruitment in the public sector? 
Following may be the main stages to initiate and complete process of recruitment. 1. Post which is required to be filled must be sanctioned and shown in budget book of a government issued for a financial year in which recruitment is initiated. The procedure of sanctioning a post is different in public sector body that is provided single-line budget and established under legislation. 2. To check whether recruitment rules of a post are made. Recruitment rules provide qualification, experience, and age limit for a suitable candidate required to be recruited for a post. When advertisement is published in a newspaper for inviting applications from suitable candidates, criteria provided in recruitment rules is highlighted in the advertisement. 3. Written test or interview or both may be held for the recruitment. 4. Merit list of selected candidates. 5. Approval of competent authority before issuing offer letter slash appointment notification slash order. 6. Observance of other codal formalities. Question number 7. How employee is promoted to next basic pay scale? Employee is promoted to next basic scale in accordance with recruitment rules of that post, promotion rules, and promotion policy etc. Employee must read and follow. Question number 8. What is lien? It is a legal right granted to an employee working on regular basis on a post and who is appointed on another post through laid down procedure. Question number 9. Explain retirement. There are mainly two types of retirement for example, retirement on superannuation and voluntary retirement. Former is done on attaining age of 60 years whereas latter may be availed on qualifying service of 25 years. Employee may be retired under compulsory retirement after due process of law. Question number 10. How woman employee may protect her from harassment at workplace? The Government of Pakistan has issued Protection Against Harassment of Women at the Workplace Act 2010 passed by the majlis e shura Parliament. It is applicable in both public sector as well as private sector. If a province has issued its own such act, passed by the concerned provincial assembly then it is applicable to the employees of the province. The act protects woman employee from harassment at workplace. Woman employee must read this act in her own interest and public interest.